Hi guys, my name is Mel Chadwick. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Weekend Workshop. Today we're going to be using liquid acrylic inks combined with the Molitor masking pen. We will be creating hand lettered pieces of art that you'll be able to stick on your wall. We'll be using some techniques that we learnt in workshop one, so if you haven't already watched that one, I suggest you just take a look. And we'll be combining those techniques with some hand lettering. You might also want to have some practice paper on hand, just in case you want to practice before you start your main project. This should take around an hour to complete, depending on how many pieces you want to do. You could even take the whole morning if you like. Remember also guys to have refreshments on hand, take your time and enjoy the process of making art. So let's get on with the workshop and I look forward to seeing what you create. So for the first part, you will need a notebook and pen to write down your ideas, a pencil, some washi tape, a ruler and a Molotow masking fluid pen. So in your notebook you're going to think of some quotes or sayings or a word that you really feel connected to and you know that when you look at that word that you'll feel inspired and encouraged. I'm just jotting down some ideas of what kind of phrase I want to use. Once you've decided on what phrase you would like to use, the next thing is you're going to just do some thumbnails which will help you work out where you're going to place your words. I'm going to be using three different sizes of paper. One is going to be a long landscape and it will measure 10 by 5 inches. The second is going to be a square, 8 by 8 inches. And the third one will be a smaller portrait size of 4.5 by 5.5 inches. So these sizes are just guidelines, you don't have to follow exactly the same size that I'm doing, but it might just help you to begin this project. So once you've done your little thumbnail sketches, the next plan is to work out how you're going to place your lettering onto each piece. So at the top you can see I've done more of a cursive lettering with the word bloom. And then the phrase that I'm using, bloom where you are planted, I am using the whole phrase on my square shape. And as you can see it sits nicely in the middle and I've decided I want to add some kind of flares coming out from the words. And then my final size I will be just using the beginning letter of my word bloom and it's going to be almost like a monogram. So this kind of idea could also work for your initial, it could be the start of your name, or it could just be the start of the word that you know you'll be reminded by if you see it. So once you've worked out exactly what you're doing and you've cut your pieces of paper to size, you're now going to fix them to the table with some washi tape. And as I said before, this washi tape is not so harsh, so it means that it will be easier to peel the washi tape off once you've finished and it shouldn't pick up any of the paper fibres and so give you a bit of a cleaner finish. Once you've done that, you will now pick up your pencil and just really lightly work out where your, your lettering is going to sit. You might want to do a couple of practice runs on some scrap paper just to get more confident with how you're going to letter 
Um, but it, once you feel confident, just go ahead and start marking out where you're going to put the lettering. Now I found that with my square design, I've used a roll of pastel tape because it just gives me a nice um, circle to work around and so just using that as a marker will help the lettering be evenly spread and be able to fit well on the paper. Once you've marked out your letters in pencil, you're now going to just erase some of the markings. If you erase it very lightly, you'll still be able to see the indent of where the pencil has marked the paper and then you'll be able to still trace around it but you won't have the pencil mark on your piece of paper. Now it's time to use your Molotow masking fluid pen. Make sure you give it a really good shake before you start using it and also test it on a piece of scrap paper. That way you can get the masking fluid flowing and you get a good even coverage. So just start with one of your pieces. I'm starting with the top one so that I don't smudge it when I do the others. Um, and all I'm doing is just following the pencil guidelines. I find that when I actually use the pen, I sometimes slightly go off the guidelines I've put on just because I feel like um, they should only serve as a guide and you may actually find you want to do the lettering maybe slightly different or maybe more spaced out. So don't be afraid just to draw your lettering on as you feel you should. Again, the more you practice doing the lettering, the easier it will come to doing it. And I always find that if you can confidently put the lettering down, the writing always looks a lot better. So you'll see with the Molotow masking pen that you only get a single line width. So this can be easily remedied by going back over your lettering and make the line slightly thicker. And it is usually where you would do the downstroke. That is normally where you would have the thicker line. It will then have a calligraphy style to it rather than just a one line width. Again, this is an opportunity for you to just experiment and try out different line widths and different styles. You'll soon find that you have a style that you're more comfortable with and I would encourage you just to continue practicing and trying out different ways of lettering. For the second part it's now time to use the ink. So choose again a limited colour palette, I'm just choosing three colours which I think go together well and I'm also going to be using some white later to add some texture and splatters. And the first technique I'm going to be using is our wet on wet technique. So we're going to just use a bigger brush to soak the entire of the paper. We're going to use a smaller brush to pick up a colour that we want to use. So dip the brush in the ink and maybe dilute with a little bit of water and then just gently dab the paper and you'll soon see that the ink starts to bleed and make those blobby patterns. Again, you can start to add different colors if you like. I would normally stick with though one other color just to make sure that the pattern does, doesn't get too muddy looking. So I'm going to come back to that one once the first layer of ink is dry and that means I will now move on to my second one. So this technique is called feathering and was a technique we learnt in the first workshop. So we're going to start by painting the ink directly at the top of the piece and work down 
gradually diluting as we go. I'm also going to be adding some more water so that the ink starts to spread into the water and you can see it starts to bleed here. And then I'm going to use another colour and add that to the mix and I'm going to repeat the process and as you can see that ink is feathering upwards and produces quite a nice gradient effect. I'll then finish this off with adding another colour and again repeat the process of layering and feathering so that you get this really nice gradient effect. So for our final piece we'll be using the wet and wet technique again. So just take your bigger brush, dip it into the water and um, coat your piece of paper like you did in the first piece. We're then going to take the brush and dip it into the ink that you wish to use and we're going to just basically do a spiral action all over the piece. You may also like to add another colour at this point and also try a different size brush as well. We're also going to be using a lifting off technique which means we'll be using the paper towel and basically dabbing the ink so that it just gently lifts off some of the ink but still leaves a really soft inky texture below. It almost looks a little bit like clouds. So I'm going to leave these to dry and then come back to them to add a bit more texture. To speed up the drying process you can use a hairdryer or you could just go and have a cup of tea and wait for it to dry naturally. Okay, we're now going to be using some acrylic inks to create textures on our pieces. Um, you don't have to do this part, but I wanted to show you how you could do it. So we're going to take a slightly stiffer brush and dip it into the darker ink. So I just use my thumb and I gently spray the bristles so that the ink sprays onto the piece. This way of working is very controlled and you can easily work out where the spray is going to go. I'm now going to use the white acrylic ink to add some texture. I'm just going to drop some ink spots onto the work and then I'm going to just blow them short and sharp so that the ink spreads out quite organically. I quite like this way of working as sometimes you don't know which way the ink will go but it still adds an interesting texture to the artwork. We're also going to tap the brush to make bigger blobs of ink. Now I'm going to go on to the square piece and I'll just use the white ink again to add texture. So I'm just going to tap the brush lightly just to give that texture again to the piece. Again you can experiment, see what happens if you use a different colour ink, you could use a darker ink say to create texture. So once you're happy with the texture that you've added, it's now time to let that dry. So just peel the washi tape off and you should have a nice clean border. Not to worry though if some of the ink does seep through. And we're now going to peel away the masking fluid. You can use your index finger or you could use an eraser. If you do use an eraser just make sure that the ink is totally dry otherwise it will smudge. And there we have it. Three pieces of art which you should be able to put on your wall as a reminder to keep going, keep being inspired, keep making art.
Don't forget guys, if you want to show me what you've created, just hashtag your work on Instagram with Weekend Workshop with Mel and I would love to see what you've created. Thanks so much guys for taking part in this workshop. Do let me know how you get on and if you have any questions just leave them below and I will see you again in another weekend workshop. Bye!